No, he said he did uh, Out of the Woods. Yeah. Um, great stuff. I think the year before, that training group from Switzerland cycled there and back. Did, did you do that this year as well? Oh. Um, no, I, I trained through the race, so I didn't rest for the race, yeah. but I didn't cycle there and back. But the boys did have a huge week the week before. They had two big uh, running days uh, the week before, and then they cycled to the race. Um, I think I, I can't remember how, how far it is. I want to say it's around <coughs> 150k, yeah. which they did over, the, over two days. They got to the race and they raced, and Ronaldo actually won. Um, and he, yeah, he and I think it was he and Stephen um, cycled. Cycled there. They didn't have to cycle back. <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, they yeah, they did. I mean, there's races that we do that are that are training races, and there's races that we do. training was a really big group, like Rex Squad and with all the athletes around you and stuff, so obviously you've had a fair amount of time away from that, so how are you managing to kind of keep up, you know, obviously you probably had a, I say obviously you probably had a break in Hawaii, but how are you managing to cope over here, and putting that kind of plan together with having people around you, because the kind of hours that you need to train are really tough on your own. Yeah, um, I've never had a problem training on, on my own, actually, um, I did it in, in 2006, and um, and, and yeah, I'm doing it now. I, it's that little fire inside of you that gets you up every single morning, um, and you know you've got to do the session. Um, and um, I don't have any, you know, any problem. I don't have any problem getting up um, and, and and forcing myself, you know, to do to, to do the work. Obviously, I have a program that I'm following that. You know, I am adapting a, li a little bit, but no, I, I, I actually quite enjoy being my own boss. And, and like I said, when I was in with the group, I was doing a lot of running and a lot of biking on my own because I can push myself. And I think, I mean, that can be a, that can be a problem as much as anything because I, I push myself too much and I need someone to hold me back and say that this ride's got to be steady, you're beating yourself again, and, you know, come back and, and, and do things, you know, and, 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 and lower, lower the pace, and I think it's helped me in that respect to train with people that taught me how to go steady, rather than taught me how to go, how to go fast, um, so, yeah, I think that's what I'm having difficulty with at the moment, kind of reining myself back. Have you been pleased or disappointed by the amount of press coverage you've had in the UK? Um, I don't. I don't really um, want to see my my picture plastered all all over just for the sake of having my name in lights. Um, but I think, in terms of raising the profile of triathlon, it would have been nicer if the mainstream media had taken more of an interest in, in the achievement and used it to, you know, to kind of promote and celebrate um, British sporting achievement. Um, I have to admit I was quite disappointed um, that triathlon in general didn't get a mention at, at sports personality. Um, of the year, not again, not because I want my name in big lights, but because I think we need to celebrate success. You know, not only me. You know, people like Holly, Abel, they've had incredible seasons.
seasons and people know nothing about them and yet we bang on about rugby where you know where we didn't even win anything and how the hell do we hope <coughs> expect people to understand anything about triathlon to, to get support for the sport um, financially um, and you know in terms of, of infrastructure if, if, if people don't know about it you know and that's why I, partly you know I go out cycling in the Surrey lanes and getting beeped all the time and people giving me the finger and because people don't realize that, as, that in Britain we're a fantastic cycling nation because no, you know, none of the mainstream media promote that, and until they do, people won't understand, and they won't understand people going out on the roads and, and riding to a breath. And so, sorry, that went on in a bit of a rant, but um, I'm not frustrated for me, I'm frustrated slightly in terms of, of the sport in general, but I just think it's indicative of, of what the mainstream media is interested in. But that said, I was very happy to win that the Daily Mail award, despite being in the Daily Mail. Um, <laughs> it's surprising how many people read, read the Daily Mail, though. <laughs> They're closet Daily Mail readers. I got lots of emails. Well, I just happened, a friend of a friend of a friend has, has seen it. Oh, yeah. um, but no, I mean, that, that was fantastic, and, and I think that's helped to, to um, you know, kind of galvanise some, some interest. Um, you've come into pro sport quite well, relatively late on for, for most triathletes now who tend to come from juniors upwards. How long do you think you'll you'll stay or plan to be a pro athlete for? Um, I th I'm relatively young for a a, a long distance triathlete. Um, I was chatting with someone today about this. Um, I mean. Potentially, I could be around for for another ten years. I mean, Natasha's forty-one and still, you know, going strong, um, unless she crashes into a cone. Um, <laughs> but you know, I I don't know if I want to be doing triathlon that long. I mean, for me, it wasn't a career choice necessarily. It wasn't about can I make you know X amount of dollars. It was how bloody good can I be? Um, and I still haven't answered that question because I need to do it more than you know more than once. I need to prove to myself that I'm not some kind of one-hit wonder and that I can regularly achieve. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I want to win every single race, but or that I'm going to win every single race. Of course I'm not, but I need to regularly be in the top three to be. Um, viewed as a, as a serious, uh, consistent triathlete. Um, I think I'd like to be around at least another three or four years, but um, ultimately use my position, hope, hopefully, to um, for, for, for a, you know a bigger and wider uh, end, um, rather than just kind of fade off into. Um, but yes, uh, hopefully, uh, with you know, with my success at triathlon, I'll have more of a platform to be able to do the things that I also feel very, very passionately about. So no, I don't see it myself as being around um, for ten years, but definitely the next three or four. Cameraman. Yeah. Um, just to, you, you mentioned your granddad. Just to get an idea of your family. I mean, I assume they don't really know triathlon and they've kind of been introduced by yourself. I mean, what's their thoughts? I mean, do they understand the significance of winning Hawaii? Um, they didn't, but they're learning quite <laughs> <laughs> Um, My mum and dad's um, experience of, of watching me race was watching me drown at the Red <laughs> 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 so, I mean, that's the only race they've ever been to. Um, <laughs> I didn't really get them that interested in triathlon or my sporting career. Um, unfortunately, they, I mean, because I, all the races have been so far away, um, that it's been very difficult for them to, to get to. Th this year, 
thankfully, um, the race organisers will pay for, for my parents to, to fly. Um, well, that's the stipulation that I gave to the race. <laughs> or I said, well, I'll, I'll race if you pay my parents' flights. So they're going to come to Frankfurt and watch me race. So that'll be the first big one. And then they will come to Kona. But no, they're incredibly, incredibly supportive. Um, and I think they're the, they're the ones that taught me that I can, you know, that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. And if you fail, then so what? At least you at least you gave it a shot. But no, my mum and dad and, and my brother are really supportive. And my granddad is <laughs> learning quickly about triathlon as quickly as you can for a 101 year old. Um, but yeah, no, he's quite excited about it too. And he's watched a little wee video and couldn't believe what the bike looked like. And You know, in terms of what your 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 uh, bigger bigger goal, um, but yeah. So, so obviously, having having a coach, or if not a coach, a, a you know a triathlon club that you can that you can join. Um, but in terms of structuring your training, obviously everyone's individual. But I mean, I think it's important to have one of have a long have a long steady a race pace and a hard harder anaerobic workout within each of the three you know disciplines obviously that's more geared towards um, um, later in the season when you're you're um, you know gearing up for races um, but yeah I think it's important to have that have that variety you're not going to get any quicker, definitely, if you don't do that, do the interval, do the, do the interval training. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to have a program that's pretty much tailored to, to you and, and your lifestyle, and then keep it keep it varied, keep it interesting, and, and enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, you don't. I mean, it's really difficult to get up in the morning. With I'm not doing as much hard interval, you know, as much hard intervals as, as I will do later on in the season. It's just getting my, you know, building up my strength and getting my, you know, strength back in my legs, legs and my arms again. Um, as I said before, I mean, the key is that I don't over, overdo it, and I risk doing that um, without having that person to to watch over me. So I do have to be careful that that I don't give myself beasting every single. I go out um, and that I get proper, you know, proper rest and, and recovery as well. When you train with your group, do you find yourself competing amongst each other? Um, yes, because we're all uber competitive people, um, otherwise we wouldn't, you know, be doing the job that we do. But it's not bitchy competitiveness, um, and I think we respect each other for <coughs> our strengths and our and our weaknesses, and we do use we use each other as as, as benchmarks as, as well. You know, if someone's better than you, well then you go 
know where you've got to get to to be in that, you know, to be competitive at that level. I mean, I've trained with Nicola Spirig, who's a, an awesome Olympic distance athlete, and I know just from training with her that where I fall short in terms of Olympic distance training and, and competitiveness. Um, so yeah, we, we do we do use each other, obviously. Um, but it, it's not it's not bitchy. Yeah. Uh, no, because again, all the the, t the, the training is very tailored, and, and Belinda will do one run, and I'll have to do a totally different session. I mean, we're all doing different different things, so we're not coming up against each other all of all of the time. Um, you know, before Hawaii, the longest run I did was two hours. I Brett wouldn't let me run longer longer than two hours, whereas Belinda and uh, Hillary uh, and Rebecca Preston would all do three hour runs for their long. You know, and biking, well, the longest ride I did was four and a half hours. Um, so, you know, different people suit different volumes and intensities of, of training. And luckily, I, you know, I found a, a program that One quick one. Um, you said that you're doing Australia and yeah. Frankfurt. Uh, is it because, you know, most of the people in Team BB, like Hillary and Luke, and, you know, there's Bill Bounder and Crow and stuff, and they seem to do every Ironman on the circuit. Well, most of them do. do you, uh, is that because, is that like Brett's way of, I mean, obviously you've got to make money, but normally people that win Hawaii, and obviously you're an exception, and, 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 and Mac had took a long time to learn that he was off doing all the Ironman all year. Don't race that hard during the year. Yeah. Um, Hillary, Brett has to rein her in. She she does a lot of races. She just loves the sport. She loves to race and she loves to get out there and be. I think she. I think she and knows she'll never win Hawaii though. Where you're. Yeah. Um, you're going to go back into world champions. You know, so you're yeah. going to defend your title so then. Yeah. Um, but I think. I mean. I think three races for me is what my body could probably sustain in a year. Alf Duez was pretty much an Ironman race in, in terms of, of the, the, the difficulty of that. I mean, Korea was obviously an Ironman and then I backed it up the next week with the 70.3 and then five weeks later into Kona. So, I mean, I, I have... I've done my fair share of racing, so just to, to, to say I'm only doing three this year doesn't sound to me that much, and I think I've, I've got them evenly yeah. spaced out. Um, and why I've chosen the races that I have, um, for no other reason than I wanted to race in Australia, because I love it there. Um, Frankfurt, because it's probably the biggest race on the circuit, and the atmosphere will be electric, and it falls at... at the right time. I mean, it was it was a tough call because there's so many great races out there. But you know, I had to pick ones that, that suited me, um, and uh, you know, suit, um, also you know, fitted with with the bigger goal, which is obviously why in October. What are you trying to do different places, sort of the next year? You said you love to travel and get 